to our top cut for both of these players. And these are some huge decks. I mean, to make it into a top cut with Gudra V-Star would be huge. I mean, I think that just happened in Lil, and uh, that was kind of shocking there. But yeah, we still have the Lost Box Kyogre here by Daniel as well, to kind of making it through with that Lost Box Kyogre, of course. One of my picks, so I'm rooting on Daniel. Hey, there you go. And this looks like a very similar list to the one that we've seen from Sawyer Melvin, who has been on an absolute tear lately. Won like 18 or 19, 18 of 19 games or something ridiculous wow. with this list. So just very consistent. Hermione on the other side, consistent in their own right, only does well with Gudra in, in his own words. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Only does well with Gudra. Well, I guess that's why they're probably playing it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Makes well, sense to me. This can certainly be an interesting matchup when you when you think about Kyogre escape ropes trying to work around uh, attacking directly into the rolling iron of the Gudra on the other side. There's a lot to consider, and you also can't play too slow because Hermione gets card into the Lost Zone pretty quickly, and that can yep. lead to Sableyes throwing damage around. Well, it looks like we have a mulligan so far here on the left side. Hermione with that mulligan, so we're going to have to shuffle up until we get a basic Pokemon here. And uh, for every time that we have to shuffle up until we get a basic, Daniel's going to get an additional card to the hand as well for this match. So I think it's only one mulligan so far. Hopefully we can get a basic on this next shuffle. Yeah, it's very important to avoid those mulligans if you can. Obviously, it's not up yeah. to you, but your opponent starting with additional cards, especially in a deck that's as fragile as a Lost Box, finding one Battle VIP pass, one additional Switch card, finding Radiant Greninja, whatever it may be, could lead to a turn one explosion on the other side. Yeah, and that is definitely never what you want to see in any deck that you're playing against, that's for sure. But Hopefully we get one. It looks like we are good to go. So once we get these prize cards out for both of our players, we're going to kick off this match here. Anything that uh, would be super detrimental for either of these players to see in the prize cards, Kyle? Just no duplicates, right? We can't Basically. see too many of one thing. Right, it's, that's something to watch out for. With Daniel's list being a little more fragile, you're going to see the only one energy recycler if yeah. Kyogre is going to be the main strategy, so look out for that. All right. These are good cards. Uh oh, yeah, Cramorant and the Radiant Greninja. Sometimes we see two Cramorant in this list, only one this time from our money. All right, so that single Cramorant is in the prize cards there, along with that Radiant Greninja. Two basic Pokemon, so even if there is a Hisu and Heavy Ball, going to have to make a choice there between those. Mm, there's Which not. There isn't? Nope. No, no Gotta heavy ball. Gotta make cuts ball. somewhere. Gotta make cuts somewhere. No heavy ball here. So we're not going to be going into those prize cards to select a Pokemon out. But there we go. We have the fist bump. We're kicking off our last Swiss round of our day two. Swiss round 15. Win and in here. Starting to the right of the field with Daniel So. Wow, that hand stinks. That's so bad. There's oh, no, no. pump, no energy, no <laughs> nothing. Did you see Daniel's expression there That's... in the camera? <laughs> that, was, that was awful. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, that was just a couple of Pokemon hitting the field. And then we're on to the left side here uh, to start off Hermani's turn. Colrus's experiment, of course, Hermani going second here. So able to play that supporter, fantastic supporter to have, start getting these uh, cards into the Lost Zone and more cards into your hand as well. So three cards are going to go to the hand and two to the Lost Zone. I think those decisions were already made here. Yeah, that was, I believe it saw both of the Hisui and Gudra to start things off and throws away one, understanding that this can be a solid Pokemon to incorporate into a matchup like this, especially if you can work it into the early stages where your opponent can't directly just place damage counters around with a Sableye, try to work in that Rolling Iron and yeah. take some additional knockouts. Well, we're also going to see a battle VIP pass from Hermani. So just going through the deck here and uh, taking taking note of everything we have here. Keeping track of these energy cards. So we haven't seen Gudra in a while here, Kyle. How does this build kind of function or look dependent or uh, compared to the last time we kind of saw Gudra hit the scene? Yeah, it's a little thinner lines with the Gudra V-Star. You're only going to see a 2-2 potentially, and uh, sometimes we saw uh, thicker lines, four threes or 3-3 or three, three lines of the Gudra really being the main focus. Instead now, there's uh, there's 
uh, other interests. We have the Sableye that's incorporated now. You see the psychic energies that are going to assist in reaching those additional numbers. You're not just focused on accelerating solely onto a Gudra and hoping that you don't yeah. get one hit knocked out. So really, it's just going to look like a Lost Box mirror, huh? Basically, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's very similar to the Kyogre-style builds that we'd see um, from Raymond Long, where it's got the same energy typing, basically, but instead yep. of focusing on that late-game Kyogre, you have jet energies, and you have this 2-2 Gudra line. So with the versatility of kind of the different strategies in this deck, the different cards, of course, you said things have to get cut here and there. Could that lead to some clunkiness over here on Hermani's side uh, compared to Daniel, who might have just a more streamlined, consistent list? I wouldn't call it clunkiness, but I'd certainly say that the flower selectings are almost as difficult as playing Kyogre in this point yeah. because you have to know exactly what your strategy is going to be. But this is one of the benefits here. We see Ooh. a jet energy yeah. that's included into this deck. Think of this as Giratina that doesn't care about big knockouts. It just wants to survive. <laughs> True. Jet energy being placed onto that Kumpei that was on the bench. And you saw it jet up into that active position there. That's exactly what that special energy provides for you. A pivot option there to bring a Pokemon up into the active. And then you also have that pivot option now that it had the energy attached to get into your other Kumpei here. So that's what we're seeing now to jump into another flower selecting. That's going to be four in the loss zone for Hermani after this flower selecting decision. Yeah, this is one of the great benefits of this deck. Playing those jet energies and three copies in this list is going to be so helpful. If you start with a Kumpei, one jet energy equals three flower selectings if yeah. you have all the Kumpeis. Unfortunately, this time it was the Manaphy, but still four cards in the Lost Zone. You know what would be good right now? What? That prized Cramorant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's always a bummer when you have four cards in the Lost Zone, but no utility. Unlocking that Lost Provisions Cramorant for some... Uh, Damage counters down. That would actually be a knockout there, but unable we to do are it. And that's it. The cram, that crucial there. Oh no, Hermani's just going to scoop it up. No, it was Daniel scoop. Sorry, Daniel <laughs> scoop it up. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> he, uh, he, he had, what, three ropes and a lot of nothing going yeah, on what in that else hand. Was in, yeah, well, what else was in the hands? There was really nothing there for Daniel. I mean, and going first and just having nothing and then going second, having nothing, it's just too much of a lead that you're giving to your opponents, and uh, that is tough to deal with. So, wow, that was uh, quicker than I thought it'd be, Kyle. <laughs> this is our first game of the day, <laughs> and it was three minutes. When you look at this matchup on paper, you don't, uh, you definitely don't expect that to happen or right. to be uh, how that turns out. I mean, just look at it. There's 12 Pokemon that you could pot potentially start. Yeah. Four Battle VIP Pass, three Nest Ball. You, you should never be missing that many Pokemon. And sure, there were some, but without any come phase, they're just not able to chain the right pieces together. Daniel yeah. understands perfectly. I'm going to have uh, 45 minutes now to try to win two games. It yeah. can certainly be enough, though. Yeah, and you got to think, too, Daniel started with uh, a mulligan as well. So that was even an extra card. Just not able to get what was needed. Going to scoop it up real quick here to save as much time for these additional games. So Armani going to take this first game in our set here between these players. And we'll see how this next game goes. Hopefully a lot better <laughs> of a hands. There, what happened? A, there was a fly on the table, and Hermani placed his active Pokemon on it. <laughs> on top of the fly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so not ready for this. Two Kumpes in the prize <laughs> What's cards. What's happening? <laughs> Hermani cannot avoid these Pokemon being in the prize cards. What in the world? Well, we're getting into our game two between these players. We're going to start on the left side of the Ooh. field this time around. A Gudra V in the active position and a Nest Ball going into the deck here for Hermani to search out another basic Pokemon. Yeah, Daniel understanding that uh, this is Lost Box. Going second yeah. is very good in this matchup. So let's Hermani start things off. And this is not the way you want to do this. Two his, uh, with the Hisuian Gudra in the active spot and two Comfe in the, in the prizes. It's going to be pivotal seeing those flower selectings early. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to need some flower selectings and uh, have to get into those Pokemon here. Did you get a look at the hands at all, Kyle? Well, I saw my favorite card 
the jet energy, and then after that, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, there's a Colrus experiment in there for next turn, but ultimately, uh, we're going to need to see some help with the flower selecting if it runs into a battle VIP pass or yeah. uh, any of those ways to search out an additional Pokemon, then Armani's going to feel a lot more comfortable. You're such a Giratina player, Kyle. I really am. It shows. <laughs> I, I, I tried to switch over to Chen Pao, and no, it just it lives rent-free in my mind. I love Jet Energy. <laughs> well, here we go. Hermani going to be able to get that Comfey out with the Nest Ball, the one of those, which is exactly what we need to see to get into those flower selectings. Now we just need to get it into the active. Yeah, I'm not slipping and tripping anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to find some cards, throw them into the Lost Zone, and figure things out from there. Yeah, don't want to slip, don't want to trip. We're just getting a nice shuffle up here before we get into the rest of this turn. Also taking notes of, of course, you get to look through the deck. You might as well look and keep track of what you already know is going to be in the prize cards. And yeah, um, Hermione, I'm sure keeping track of there's Pokemon in there. Yeah, the times, <laughs> times two comfy frowny face. <laughs> frowny face, <That's> <laughs> exactly. But here we go. We have the rest of this turn still. As you said, there is the jet energy, but it's going to be the switch cart this time used for uh, that comfy to get into the active and go into our first flower selecting. Looks like a tough decision. Yeah, there's there's always debate there. I, I didn't see what this was, but oh, it's, it's going to be a cold ex experiment there. But with the jet energy, you don't want to use it on a turn where you're not necessarily going to be using it to max efficiency, where you get to sw swap around, see multiple comfes. Yeah. But I don't think that's a possibility for Hermani anyways. He has two comfes in the Lost Zone, so True. why not just use that energy here? Yeah, that's a really good point. Well, we're going to leave off that first turn with one card in the Lost Zone, and now we're over on to Daniel's side of the field. Comfey in the active position, great place to be. We have the Radiant Greninja coming out here off this Battle VIP pass. And you see Daniel here keeping track of all of these energy, as well as the, as well as the other resources that are so important to this deck, uh, really this build of the deck as well. The Mirage Gates here, now taking a look at the Pokemon, because we get one more off this Battle VIP pass, and it's going to be a Cramorant. Yeah, this list isn't going to burn like some of the other turbo loss uh, box decks that you've seen before, eight or nine energies. This is 11 energies focused on using those resources to continue to burn through the deck, use your retreats optimally, and attack with that Cramorant in the early stages. Yep. And eventually, you'll work your way towards that Kyogre if you can. And it certainly should be an option. Uh, not a lot of players will play that Manaphy uh, with the, the Gudra list, but we do see that featured here for Hermani, so look out for that too. All right, we're going to go with this first flower selecting from Daniel. It's going to be the Forest Seal Stone hitting the Lost Zone here. Looks like it was for a Mirage Gate to be kept to the hand. There's potential with this hand, certainly. The Nest Ball, the Forest Seal Stone as well. So guaranteed access to Colrus Experiment. And from that point, it's, you're talking about Lost Vacuums, potentially a stadium Ooh. like a Pokestop. There's, there's avenues to knocking out this Confei very easily. Well, let's see if we can see that. The Dragonite V is going to be taken out of the deck here for Daniel off of that Nest Ball. Yeah, Dragonite, a great threat against the early mm. Hisuian Gudra. However, damaging your own board in a matchup like this is not fun. That's scary, So yeah. if you are going to attack with it, it better be for good reason. That is spooky. Spooky season indeed. Forest Seal Stone going to go into the deck here. Our single V-Star power used for the game here on Daniel's side to get any card you want from your deck. And that's exactly what Daniel's going to do. Yeah, easy choice there with the Colder's Experiment. See more cards, throw two in the Lost Zone. We're really just looking for one more Comfey. And from there, you have the option to use the, the Cramorant for a knockout on the active Comfey for Hermani, which, who is clearly struggling yeah. to find resources right now. Yeah, definitely. I think we can see that pretty clearly here. Not looking super great uh, from this perspective on Hermani's side. Daniel going to uh, get oh. some more cards into the Lost Zone. This is my favorite flex, the, the, the throwing battle VIP pass into the Lost Zone on turn one. Oh, yeah. it's, it's only second to throwing away Roxanne because then you say there is not going to be a late game anyways. That's true. So I've seen both of my favorites right now. <laughs> this is just your game, huh, Kyle? <laughs> Perfect match for you to cast. Well, we have that Battle VIP pass and that Psychic Energy hopping into the Lost Zone. Yeah, I mean, there's so much that has happened so far on this turn, uh, in contrast, especially to our Game 1 here.
here for Daniel that it's hard to uh, imagine. This is still our turn one here. We're going into another flower selecting. It's going to be a Mirage Gate this time, hitting that Lost Zone for that psychic energy to the hands. Yeah, this is very much uh, one of those Sableye matchups. And when you are using Mirage Gate, it's either for a very aggressive Dragonite or, of course, to close out the yeah. game with that Kyogre. It can honestly be for thinning purposes at some points, too. So you don't need to use more than two, maybe three Mirage Gate in the game. Well, here we go. We have this retreat into the Cramorant that's in the active position now here for Daniel. And the Lost Zone is at four, so... There you go. You have the hit and the knockout of that Comfey on Hermione's side. That's going to be one less way for Hermione to be able to get cards into the Lost Zone and to the hand as well. But luckily, we have that Colrus's experiment that we can at least work with for this turn. But what else is there, Kyle? This is awkward. The, the final Comfey is there, a Jet Energy as well. So uh, finding more resources to get cards into the Lost Zone will be available but from this point. You probably also need to hold on to that Colrus experiment, even though you already have one in hand. It's a lot of back and forth, and you can see Armani really thinking through this uh, this turn here. Oh, yeah. I mean, you said it before, Kyle. Like, these decisions are not easy, uh, especially when you're in kind of a tough decision uh, position here. Jet energy and the psychic energy going to go into that loss zone. Of course, we have to keep that final last comfy here in that jet energy is going to bring it into the active spot so we'll have another flower selecting here for hermani battle vip pass useless to us now jumping into the lost zone yeah this i mean this is so difficult obviously thankfully for hermani held on to that lost vacuum because yeah. next turn reaching seven is going to be difficult no more comfy likely will be in play at this point two in the prize cards and you're stuck at four cards in the lost zone so the colrus experiment reaches six Lost Vacuum helps you reach at least seven, and then from there, you're attacking with the Hisuian Kudra. Yeah, that is one thing. Hisuian Kudra does have more of a uh, costly attack here than we're used to seeing in some Lost Box. I mean, Sableye, one energy, Cramorant, free, you know? <laughs> but yeah, that Kudra is going to take some energy here, and Hermani just can't get to that point early on in the game unless there's those cards in the Lost Zone from the Raj Gate. Daniel... Going into this turn here, stacking some more cards into the Lost Zone off that first flower selecting. Just the Battle VIP pass. Easy peasy here. Yeah, what else is going on in this hand? Uh, it's not the greatest. Uh, it's, certainly some assistance from more Comfes would be nice, but at this point, just feels comfortable playing it slow, taking knockouts on the Comfes and addressing the situations that Hermione continues to present, which is just, I'm looking to get at least one more card in the Lost Zone. Yeah. Well, I need to stop that. Yep, and that seems to be a pretty darn good strategy. We're ending with seven cards now in the last one on Daniel's side. That's where Hermione wants to be. But that Comfey is going to hit the discard pile. We have another Colrus's experiment from the hand to at least work with here for another three cards. Can we talk about how cool that play was? Uh, obviously, losing Kyogre is unfortunate, but there's no more tools in play. There's no stadiums in play. Hermani, if he wants to reach seven in the Lost Zone, needed something to remove with Lost Vacuum. It's not there now. No options. It's, it's just a Hisuian Gudra V-Star, and I don't think I see another card that Hermani would be able to target with a Lost Vacuum. Yeah, that's pretty wicked, actually. Super, I mean, that's super heads up play there. And yeah, Hermione's kind of stuck with some more obstacles in the way. We're still on this Colrus's experiment. So you can tell this is a difficult decision here. Going to be that Spiritomb wow. and a Super Rod hitting the Lost Zone. What do you think about that, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, well, Super Rod obviously would be great if you could incorporate the Comfey into a turn like this turn right here. Yeah. But it looks like there was no way to search out that Pokemon. So from that Yeesh. point, Super Rod's pretty useless. This oh, one might be close God. to sealed up at this point. Hermione, yeah. of course, still has Moisture Star, can yep. hold on for a little while, but it's Daniel's job to continue to put Hermione into awkward spots, at least get some damage here. Yeah, that's been this entire game. Not enough energy to do anything with that Hisuian Gudra. And Daniel's going to go with this turn now. That's, Just attack again with that's that all you need. Yep, that's yep. all you need. 110 damage there. Hermione's on a clock here. And uh, yeah, just not having any of those Gumfei is so rough. Super Rod going into Lost Zone, at least another Colrus's experiment, but what's it gonna get us? I mean, this is impressive that Hermione has continued to chain together Colrus's experiments. Know, Found another Colrus's experiment <laughs> off of this one. <laughs> the, yeah. And uh, it's sure enough, 
eight cards in the Lost Zone, only with two Flower Selecting, is certainly going to lead to that is pretty finding wild. some additional energies. The problem from this point is Armani doesn't feel comfortable benching anything other than yeah. another Hisui and Gudra, or uh, the, yeah, just a regular Hisui and Gudra. From, and from that point, you could walk into potentially escape rope knockouts if you don't play anything else. Yep, and uh, that's what it looks like it's going to be. That Hisui and Gudra V hitting the bench here on Hermani's side. At least keeping things safe. Uh, not, not only rolling with one Hisui and Gudra in the active here. So there's that. But still, it's, uh, it's definitely been rough here. And you got to think, too, Daniel is already down two prize cards as well. So things are uh, looking tough. Definitely, Daniel definitely has the lead here in this matchup. Right, and from this point, if you're Hermani, certainly you can attack with Rolling Iron, take a knockout and get rolling, but do you Moisture Star? Get rolling. Says, you know what? <laughs> I'll let you attack into me, I suppose. It's, well, we're talking about 30 damage that would be left over. Yeah, you could still take a knockout there with the Dragonite if yeah. you choose. And I think Daniel does have the pieces. Well, that's going to be at least a prize card there for Hermani off of that Cramorant knockout. Daniel going to go in with a flower selecting here off this comfy. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> Finds the Colrus experiment. Colrus's experiment, two cards hitting the lost zone here. Another comfy and a lost vacuum. So many cards in the hand right now. Yeah, very wise from Daniel. Identifying the, uh, the rock sand there can be a nice... Uh, comeback mechanism. If you do start to give up some prizes to Armani, it looks like with a field <laughs> set up like Armani's that maybe you can catch them off guard and maybe use that card to slow them down. If you only have yeah. two and uh, two cards in hand, what are you doing with this deck? True. Looks like we're going to take a quick... Oh, was, okay, I was wondering what that was, but I guess the Mirage Gate makes sense. That's why energy would be popping out here. So we're going to see that Mirage Gate to accelerate these energy onto the field. One on that Comfey and getting that Sableye ready to attack. Yeah, I mean, Dragonite was available. If, if that was Daniel's choice, certainly could have seen that. Instead, now it's going to focus on placing the damage counters, maybe spreading between the two Gudras, but... Any additional damage that you place on the active, you would have to expect would be Moisture Star away. Yep, Moisture Star, that V-Star power from the Hisuian Gudra V-Star. You just heal all your damage off of the Hisuian Gudra. It's just a tank Pokemon. It's a big goo monster that can uh, absorb so much damage and then just shake it off. I know it's one of your favorites, right, Kyle? Yeah, <laughs> love that guy. <laughs> He's always talking about the slime trail. Yep. Of, uh, just never just been a believer. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm not being proven that just yet, but I understand <laughs> the, uh, the appeal. <laughs> well, I mean, Hermani said this is the only thing I succeed with, so must be uh, that good choice of deck here for Hermani. Succeeding so far, trying to get into our top eight with it. We're going to have this Dragonite being uh, attached to with this water energy into a Mirage Gate now. Yeah, what a weird workaround to yeah, get into this situation. <laughs> this, I, I suppose maybe this made the most use of energies uh, pre-recycler, but the, sir, at least the energy's got to Dragonite. I was yes, getting worried yeah, for a yeah. second. Deal with the threat that's in front of you. The sequence of events was... Uh, a little interesting there, but we got there, Oh, Kyle. I don't even know if we're dealing with the active. There's an escape rope in hand. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What are we going to see here, Kyle? What did, wow. what did little Gudra do to you? <laughs> it doesn't even have energies. <laughs> the Gudra V. It doesn't we've already, have I mean, we, we, We've already seen a retreat. It has to be rope for a knockout. Yeah, you're right. We did. We saw This uh, Pokemon has a V-Star. Oh. It can, you can heal this. Well, that's what it's going to be, Kyle. It's, it's going to be the rope. It's, it's Sableye. Sableye coming up into the active position here for Daniel. And, of course, the only Pokemon on the other side for Hermione, that Gudra V being brought into the active position here. Kyle, what do you think about this? That's I, it, it is a Pokemon play that can be made. <laughs> well, I, I don't uh, want to place any more damage onto the 
the bench to Suya Gudra V-Star at this point. Yes. Moisture yeah. Star is a potential. Any damage that you place there is going to disappear. Yep. Oh, I think that's exactly what we just All saw. Right. It looks like it was being debated here, but then Daniel goes, yeah, 12 onto this Gudra V here. So at least some of this damage should be sticking somewhere on the field. But yeah, the, you still have the option for that Moisture Star V-Star power wherever you want it, as long as it's a Gudra V-Star that is doing it. So we're going to see this Mirage Gate attaching these two energy onto the active Hisuian Gudra V with that water and metal energy. Yeah, uh, if there's a boss's orders in hand and Hermani can start to go aggressively after the Dragonite V, maybe there's a situation where Hermani pulls out uh, on top here because yeah. you're going to get the first attack into this Pokemon. It's not going to guarantee that Dragonite gets to attack twice now. And there's two boss's orders in the list. Certainly is a possibility. Ooh, and look at that. This Chorus's experiment gets one of them into the hand here. Manaphy and Battle VIP pass going into the Lost Zone for those three cards into the hand. We see all the, already this Hisuian Gudra V-Star, another energy, the manual attachment for the final energy needed to get this rolling iron. And it's just going to be a knockout this turn on that Sableye. Knocking it out, taking another prize card, down to four left to take to run away with this game. And that leaves Daniel with this Dragonite V in the active position now. Which I will remind him once more, can knock out either of these Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Gill is 250, you're reducing 80, that's 170. It knocks out both Pokemon that are currently in play. Just attack into one of them, remove from play, voice, uh, force <laughs> the Moisture Star, and you're going to be in a, in a solid position. Voice the Moist, baby. <laughs> we have this Radiant Greninja on this concealed card, drawing two additional cards to the hands. I mean, Daniel's got to know this, right? Oh, yeah. We're seeing Maybe. this. <laughs> we saw the Hisuian Heavy Ball be used there, and it's put into the prize cards now for that basic Pokemon to be drawn out there. Sableye on the field here for Daniel. Just taking a look at the cards here for Daniel. Debating... What is going on? But maybe just trying to play some stuff out here. It looks like debating the nest ball, but taking count. Yeah, this looks like super rod now. Yeah. And I mean, sure, Sableye is super a nice rod. Pokemon to incorporate when you're trying to take those knockouts, maybe with the Echoing Horn yeah. later on. And obviously, Hermani's trying to avoid any situation where the last prizes taken are not this Hisuian Gudra V-Star. Doing some pre-plan in there. Well, we see the knockout there on that Hisuian Gudra V-Star. For Daniel, only two prize cards left to take to tie things up in this set between these players. Hermione on the other side left with this Hisuian Gudra V-Star. Still have that Moisture Star, V-Star power, and a whole hand of cards as well. Drawn for, for the turn here on Hermione's side. All right, I'm going to go to Math Camp for a minute. Go Obviously, for it. Moisture Star is fantastic, but at this point, you use Rolling Iron, you can deal 200 damage to the active Pokemon. Yep. If the counterplay is to just attack with the Dragonite V, a lot of damage gets placed onto the board. And you're talking about True. 30 damage for a Dragonite, 30 for a Sableye, 30 for a Comfey, 30 for a Comfey. That is a four prize swing, well, five prize swing, even if you wanted it, available with a Sableye on the side for Hermione. So. Dragonite's no longer a choice as of an attacker unless you are winning the game. That is scary here, Kyle. That was actually uh, pretty impressive on the, the math camp here as well. My mom made me go. <laughs> well, we're going to see the retreat here from that Hesuian Gujar V into the Zamazenta now in the active. This is worrisome. As Echoing Horn, we know, is a play for Daniel. So now True. the two prize cards could be a Zamazenta and insert random Pokemon with 70 hit points, which is fantastic. Yeah. I can, you can work around all the additional hit points of this Gudra. But this is certainly a threat that you're going to have to work around. And what handles this Pokemon at the moment? 130 hit points, pretty nice ability on it. Yeah. And uh, it's only, if it's only Dragonite, that's bad news. 
Oof. Yeah, exactly. As you said before, well, we're going to chain together the super rod to shuffle back in these energy. We're going to see multiple Mirage Gate here now from Hermani to accelerate these energy out of the deck onto the field here. Two metal energy and water attacked or attached to that Zamazenta for the attack ready to go. And of course, one water placed onto that Hisuian Gudra V Star as well, recharging it up on the field. All right, 220 damage would be placed onto the Dragonite. And then you're talking about 5-5-1. Five, five, Easy way to close out with the oh Sableye next gosh, turn. Yes. This is a potential checkmate where Hermani also worked around Roxanne that and is, gets to hold on yeah. to the Sableye and the Psychic Energy. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That is something our players are always looking to do. Make sure there's no shenanigans happening in the late game with Roxanne. You don't get stuck with anything. Some, some bad draw of the cards and lose the game from there. That's exactly what Hermani's doing here with four prize cards left to take but it can be a swing for all of them and daniel has to stop that before it happens we're going to go into a chorus's experiment here on daniel's side i'm just looking for any miracle play any choice belts or anything there's nothing featured in the list that could potentially take the two prize knockout at this point kyogre is in the loss zone so if there were a world where you incorporate escape rope plus echoing horn and then try to go for it all right there that's yeah. not a line either Oh, that is tough. We see one super rod hit this loss zone here for Daniel. It's going to just be two super rod. All right. What are we working with it's, here, Kyle? It has to be switch carts from this point. And uh, we see one in the loss zone. I'm sure there were a few used to get to this point. There was a lot used, actually. There was like three in the... Um, in the discard pile already from oh, earlier. Don't say so. that. That's bad. Oh, they're all gone. All of them are gone? There's no healing oh, yep. remaining. All the damage is locked in place. Yeah, I saw a bunch of them earlier, but I think you're right. That is all of them. All four switch cart. Sheesh. What are we to do, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? I'm on Hermani's team now. <laughs> <laughs> I switch sides. <laughs> yeah, this this is tough. From this point, I, I'm not sure what you're supposed to do because you want to place damage, maybe with a Pokemon like Sableye. Yeah. Uh, work it onto the Zamazenta, then go for the Echoing Horn combination. Uh, take those last two prize cards. Obviously, don't attack with Dragonite here. That yep. seems terrible. <laughs> don't attack. Damage all your own Pokemon. No yeah. big deal. <laughs> Make it even more obvious that you lose to Sableye <laughs> in this moment. But this is right from Daniel. Continue to draw through. Yeah. See more cards with the Radiant Greninja. Maybe there's something in the deck. Yeah. But there's not. Yeah, unfortunately. Just another Water Energy and a Comfey added to the hand of the Concealed Cards after another Flower selecting from this Comfey. And, uh, yeah, there's just... Such a huge hand, which is unfortunate, but not much there. It's going to be another Mirage Gate here. The best thing that happened this turn is that the Hisuian Gudra is in the active spot. So at least you're forcing an additional resource from Hermani there. That's well, true. Either it be a, any switching effect or heavy jet energy plus Mirage Gate. But we know that there's an escape rope in hand. Yep. It's all there. It's all there indeed. Pokestop going to come into the pl into play here, but there's an escape rope now from Daniel. All right. Looking to soften up both Pokemon with the Radiant Greninja and then go for the surprise Echoing Horn next turn or this turn. Take the prize now, it looks like. Yep, bringing out that Comfey onto the field from that Echoing Horn. The discard pile is searched to bring it out there uh, from Daniel's side. I don't think there's any way to be more calm in this situation for Hermione. Yeah. Place the damage. Look at this. Drawl, Sableye, Psychic, Ooh. and that's going to close things out. Plenty of damage to go around. Hermione punching the ticket into top eight. <laughs> Hermione Hatalati, you saw the fist bumps there. Our winner here in our round 15, winning in Hermione Hatalati, making it in with his Suian Gudra V Star. Are you surprised here, Kyle? I would have not chosen this deck, but after seeing it perform like that, it looks very fun. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> I've been converted. Uh, well, let's be honest, I'd rather play your team still. <laughs> yeah, we all know that, Kyle. We knew the answer there. Unfortunately for Daniel, so 
trying to make things work and doing an amazing job there. Daniel's one of our Canadian players working with that uh, Kyogre Lost Box. And I was rooting for Daniel, but just not able to make things happen in, in this match, losing 2-0 there to Hermani. I mean, that first game that we saw was just so unlucky, Kyle. It was so unlucky. Yeah, uh, Daniel openly saying, I haven't played the matchup. And yeah, it is, it is oh. one that you don't keep in your back pocket. It's, it's tricky, but just trying to do the math, find the right opportunities, force your opponent to have all of the resources was the name of the game. And so we, we had a very quick one here. Pass the turn from Armani. Daniel takes a look at the hand, and uh, that's, that's the worst card I've ever seen. Why do I need a Kyogre <laughs> with three ropes? I'm out of here. Yep. Yeah, that was just bad. It showed the hand, showed the next card, which was a Super Rod. I just scooped it up there. Daniel, I believe there's still like 44 minutes left on the clock here. We got into our game two trying to hope that things could go better here. We did get several uh, knockouts here with the Cramorant for Daniel, but just ended up not being enough. Yeah, this was all Daniel all the time in the early stages. However, ran out of juice, was not able to find a Colrus experiment, had to eventually find that later on, but slowed down and only took knockouts with the Cramorant, trying to close out on some of these comfies. Yep. Hermani chained together multiple Colrus experiment back to back to back, finding avenues to continue attacking. And then there was this great turn here where not only did you uh, present two big threats, but you get to follow it up with the Moisture Star next turn. Yeah, Moisture Star healing all the damage that you can. You're reducing damage, you're healing damage. That is the name of the game for Suyin at Gudra V-Star. And uh, it worked out well for Hermani here. As you said, Kyle, you know, Daniel really hasn't played much of this matchup. We haven't seen Gudra in a very long time, so probably wasn't fully prepared for this, but still did an incredible job here trying to do everything with this Radiant Greninja here at the end of this game. But that is all Hermani needed, the Sableye, the attachment here, and we got there. We see the fist bump, and Hermani is the winner here in our Swiss round. 15 some incredible gameplay from both of our players there but that's it that is all for our swiss rounds kyle we're gonna be heading into top eight there's gonna be some interesting matchups in this top eight let's yes, be honest we see charizard what does charizard do against the and gudra that's <laughs> wild to think about with the damage cap